Deregulated nutrient sensing refers to the disruption in the body's ability to accurately sense and respond to nutrient availability. Within our cells, there are specific nutrient sensing pathways responsible for detecting the availability of nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids. Key pathways involved in this process include mTOR, AMPK, MAPK, and insulin IGF-1 signaling pathways. The MAPK pathway is activated in response to extracellular signals such as growth factors, hormones, and environmental stress. When a cell receives a signal, it triggers a cascade of phosphorylation events involving MAPKs and other proteins, ultimately leading to a cellular response. MAPK stands for Mitogen Activated Protein Kinase, which is a type of protein kinase involved in signal transduction pathways. A kinase is a type of enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate group from a donor molecule, usually ATP or adenosine triphosphate, to a specific substrate molecule. This phosphorylation event can regulate the activity, function, or localization of the target substrate, thereby influencing various cellular processes. These pathways are crucial for various cellular processes, including cell growth, proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis. There are three main MAPK pathways to talk about. ERK stands for Extracellular Signal Regulated Kinase Pathway and is involved in cell growth and differentiation in response to growth factors. The JNK Cgen and terminal kinase pathway is often activated by stress signals and plays a role in apoptosis and cellular responses to stress. The P38 MAPK pathways is also activated by these stress signals and is involved in the inflammation response to environmental stress. mTOR, which stands for the mechanistic target of rapamycin, is a protein kinase that plays a central role in regulating cellular processes including growth, proliferation, and survival. It functions as a key component in two distinct protein complexes. mTOR complex 1 is sensitive to rapamycin, a drug which inhibits its activity. It regulates processes related to cell growth, including protein synthesis, ribosome biogenesis, and autophagy. mTOR1 is activated in response to various signals, again, including growth factors, nutrients, and energy status. It integrates these signals to promote cell growth and inhibit catabolic processes like autophagy. mTOR2, on the other hand, is relatively insensitive to rapamycin. It is involved in the regulation of cell survival, metabolism, and actin filaments in the cytoskeleton. mTOR2 is activated by growth factors and regulates the activity of certain kinases, including AKT, protein kinase B, which is important for cell survival and proliferation. AMPK, or AMP-activated protein kinase, is an enzyme that plays a crucial role in cellular energy homeostasis. It is often referred to as a cellular energy sensor because its activation is triggered by a high AMP, adenosine monophosphate, to ATP, adenosine triophosphate, ratio. AMPK is activated in response to a decrease in cellular energy levels, indicating that the cells need to conserve energy or generate more ATP. Once activated, AMPK promotes catabolic processes that generate ATP and inhibits anabolic processes that consume ATP. Catabolism is the breakdown of complex substances to their constituent parts, whilst anabolism is about the growth of new cells and the maintenance of the body. I'm certain you've all heard of anabolic steroids and the mass it produces. This AMPK pathway stimulates glucose uptake and fatty acid oxidation whilst inhibiting glycogen and protein synthesis. AMPK activation has broad effects on cellular functions. It helps to maintain cellular integrity during times of energy stress, promotes mitochondrial biogenesis, and regulates autophagy, the process whereby cells degrade and components are recycled. 
AMPK exerts its effect by phosphorylating various downstream targets, including enzymes involved in energy metabolism and transcriptional regulators. Insulin, an insulin-like growth factor, known as IGF-1, are two closely related hormones that play crucial roles in regulating various physiological processes in the body, including glucose metabolism and cell growth. The signaling pathway of insulin and IGF-1 are interconnected and share many common components. Insulin binds to the insulin receptor, which is a receptor tyrosine kinase. The insulin receptor is a transmembrane protein consisting of two alpha subunits and two beta subunits linked by disulfide bonds. IGF-1 binds to the IGF-1 receptor, which is also a receptor tyrosine kinase. The IGF-1 receptor shares structural similarities with the insulin receptor. Binding of insulin or IGF-1 to their respective receptors leads to autophosphorylation of specific tyrosine residues on the receptor beta subunits. This activation step is crucial for initiating downstream signaling events. Activated insulin or IGF-1 receptors phosphorylate insulin receptor substrate proteins on tyrosine residues. IRS proteins act as docking sites for downstream signaling molecules. Phosphoinositide-free kinase, or PI3K, is recruited by insulin receptor substrate, or IRS, proteins and activated. Activated PI3K converts phosphotidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, or PIP2, to phosphotidylinositol 3,4,5-triphosphate, or PIP3. PIP3 activates protein kinase B, a serine threonine kinase that regulates various cellular processes, including glucose uptake, glycogen synthesis and protein synthesis. AKT activation promotes glucose uptake in cells, particularly in muscle and adipose tissue, by facilitating the translocation of glucose transporters, known as GLOT4, to the cell membrane. AKT also inhibits glycogen synthase kinase 3, or GSK3, leading to increased glycogen synthesis. To prevent excess signaling, negative feedback mechanisms exist, including the phosphorylation and inhibition of upstream components like IRS proteins. These pathways collectively regulate glucose homeostasis, cell growth, and metabolism in response to insulin and IGF-1. Dysregulation of this signaling is associated with various diseases, the most common of course being diabetes and cancer. One way to understand deregulated nutrient sensing is by looking at the effects of caloric restriction. Caloric restriction is a dietary strategy that reduces nutrient intake while maintaining essential nutrients. It has been shown to modulate nutrient sensing pathways and extend lifespan in various organisms, suggesting a strong link between nutrient sensing and aging. It is why nowadays you see so much relating to intermittent fasting from those in the longevity community. It's not just aging that this is related to, as it's well known that being overweight can increase one's biological age. In obesity, there's often a chronic imbalance between nutrient intake and energy expenditure. This excess nutrient availability can lead to hyperactivation of nutrient sensing pathways, particularly mTOR. This hyperactivation is associated with metabolic dysfunction and an increased risk of related diseases. Deregulated nutrient sensing is frequently linked to insulin resistance. In insulin resistance, cells do not respond effectively to insulin signaling, leading to impaired glucose uptake and metabolism. This condition is often a precursor to type 2 diabetes. Nutrient sensing pathways impact cellular signaling and gene expression, influencing metabolic processes, cellular growth, and energy utilization. Nutrient sensing can influence mitochondrial function, which plays a crucial role in energy production and metabolism. This dysregulated nutrient sensing can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. Age-related hormonal changes, such as reduction in growth hormones, 
Sex hormones such as estrogen and testosterone and increased levels of cortisol are also associated with disruption in nutrient sensing pathways. It is why you see such a big push nowadays for older men and menopausal women to take hormonal replacement therapies. It's why you also see so many celebrities look absolutely jacked even into later life. I mean, look at Vince McMahon. Dude is in his 70s. Yeah, definitely all natural, eh? But these treatments do seem to have a positive effect. It's why I'm so passionate about this research after all, and redefining what aging means. If we are already using everything including the kitchen sink to try and delay the aging process, I don't see why we shouldn't take it that one step further, take that final step, and go full hog with it. Now there's been a lot of hype around rapamycin in recent months as a drug for anti-aging therapy. Rapamycin is a macrolide compound that is usually used to coat coronary stents and prevent organ transplant rejection, as well as certain diseases such as perivascular epithelioid cell tumors. It's gained attention in the scientific and medical communities as a potential anti-aging drug due to its ability to target the mechanistic target of rapamycin, that being the mTOR pathway. Metabolism and aging are closely interconnected, and finding ways to reduce this process has been implicated in strategies to reduce the aging process. Rapamycin inhibits mTOR, which plays a central role in metabolism and as such, both aging and age-related diseases. By inhibiting mTOR, rapamycin slows down cellular processes. In addition, it has been shown to combat other hallmarks of aging, including autophagy stimulation and cellular senescence, which we will cover soon. Now before I leave this section, I want to talk briefly about sirtuins. Sirtuins are a family of highly conserved NAD plus dependent enzymes that play a crucial role in various cellular processes, including DNA repair, metabolism, and lifespan regulation. They have been implicated in influencing longevity and age-related processes. There are seven sirtuin proteins in mammals, designated as SIRT1 through to SIRT7. Each sirtuin has specific cellular functions and substrates. Sirtuins function as deacetylases, removing acetyl groups from lysine residues on target proteins. This deacetylation activity is dependent on the presence of NAD+, and it produces nicotinamide, or NAM, and O-acetyl ADP ribose as byproducts. This is partially why David Sinclair's research into nicotinamide mononucleotides and sirtuins are so closely related. NMN is an intermediate compound in the biosynthesis of NAD+, while sirtuins are dependent on NAD+. SIRT1 is involved in the regulation of gene expression, DNA repair, and metabolism. It targets various transcription factors and coactivators, including p53, FOXO proteins, and PGC1-alpha. SIRT2 is mainly localized in the cytoplasm and involved in cell cycle regulation, cell division, and cytoskeletal dynamics. SIRTs 3, 4, and 5 are predominantly found in mitochondria and play roles in regulating mitochondrial function, energy metabolism, and oxidative stress responses. SIRT6 is involved in DNA repair, genome stability, and inflammation control. Finally, SIRT7 is mainly located in the nucleolus and implicated in rDNA transcription and ribosome biogenesis. Sirtuins are implicated in the regulation of various metabolic pathways, including glucose homeostasis, lipid metabolism, and insulin sensitivity. SIRT1 in particular plays a role in promoting gluconeogenesis in the liver and improving insulin sensitivity in peripheral tissues. Activation of sirtuins, particularly SIRT1, has been shown to extend lifespan in various model organisms, including yeast, worms, and flies. 
Activation of sirtuins is thought to mimic the effects of caloric restriction on metabolism and longevity. It will be interesting to see how mastering the understanding of these biochemicals in the future can help longevity research.